for the mitzvah of the Torah, that is also to allow a dead body to remain. He covers six bananas. So a mitzvah to bury him as soon as possible. In the olden days, he used to bury him on the same day. Today, it's not possible always. He used to bury him on the same day. He didn't wait at all. Now, the Egyptians didn't follow that practice. The Egyptians mummified their dead. They treated them with various herbs and spices, and they let them lie exposed to the family's view for a long time, but not among us. Immediately the body was put into the ground. Now you might say, is that respectful to the mess? To get rid of them immediately? It seems the way of the Egyptians, after they are cultured people, and they had respect for uh, especially dignified persons, and they want them to remain lying in view, like sometimes a president passes away, and he lies in state, and tens of thousands of people pass by and look at the body, they pay the last respects. It takes a long time before he's buried. So, why is it that the Torah says immediately you should bury a mess? immediately consign him to the ground. After all, the ground, it's a very sad state that the body is assigned to. The body has to disintegrate, and there are worms in the ground. It's a pity what happens to the body. What's the hurry to get rid of the body? And the answer is the body is a great contradiction to the truth. Looking at a dead body knocks out of their mind Hashorah Sanefish, belief in the afterlife. That's what happens. This man who could smile, who could look, who could talk, now is nothing but a piece of dead flesh. It's so disheartening. It's so difficult to believe in Olam Habo. It's such a contradiction to the Amunah that is in the Shaman. And therefore, as soon as possible, get it out of sight. The body is the greatest falsehood. The body is alive. People think your eyes show you the truth. The eyes are deceiving you. You remember, what was the worst fruit in the world, the most poisonous fruit that caused the greatest injury in the world? It was the fruit of the Eitz Hadas. Now, I don't know if the Eitz Hadas was any special kind of fruit. I can't tell you. It could be it was an ordinary fruit, but the fact that Odom and his wife ate from it spoiled them so that they deteriorated they lost their previous greatness because they transgressed the will of Hashem. And they brought upon the world a very great change. The entire existence of mankind was altered, was made different because they ate that fruit. It was the very worst kind of eating that ever took place. Worse than that a person ate something poisoned. This poisoned the whole future of mankind. And yet that fruit was so beautiful that the eyes testified that it was delicious. It was fit to eat. But the woman saw, he told for ate the mouth. This fruit is good to eat. It was a beautiful fruit. And her mouth was watering at the prospect of biting into that fruit, the juice of the fruit. The flavor of that fruit. She could imagine. Her eyes were telling her things about that fruit. But he saw the hula and I am. It was a, a lure. A desire for the eyes. Renechmo 
to Eitz Lahaskel, and therefore she thought that the Eitz is desirable to give wisdom. Now the truth is that fruit took away all the wisdom. By eating the fruit, they lost their wisdom, didn't gain anything. The greatest wisdom is to be aware of Hashem. Where is his chokma yiras Hashem? And to abide by that principle always, that's wisdom, to be aware of Hashem. But to eat of that fruit that Hashem said you shouldn't eat, it was the biggest contradiction to yiras Hashem. And the chokma, to lose some of the awareness of the presence of Hashem, meant a tremendous loss to mankind. To transgress the word of Hashem means to lose sight that you're standing in His presence. So here's a case where the most luscious fruit, the most desirable one, with the eyes testify, was actually the very worst thing in the world. And so we learn from that model that the eyes are the greatest deceivers of mankind. The eyes. Don't tell people the truth. When you look at the sky by day and your eyes tell you it's so bright and lucid, you're seeing everything. But you know it's not so. Your eyes are deceiving you. In your mind you should know that at night you're going to see stars. So your eyes are not showing you the truth. They're, cut, they're concealing the truth from you. And when it says, after eating from the Eitz Adas, the eyes have both have opened up. They're like saying, the eyes were closed up. That's the real truth. By following their eyes, and eating of that fruit, their eyes were closed up. They didn't see the truth anymore. They lost sight of the truth. And therefore, when a body is allowed to lie around, sometimes a body disintegrates, putrefies, and it's a terrible sight. And so I call these who says, you're going to look at the body and you'll see the indignity of mankind. I am trying to teach you that the face is a cell of Malachim. A face of a man is an image of Hashem. It's a glorious thing, a face of a human being. Any human face is the most noble object in the world. There's nothing, entire nature, that can compare with the glory of a human face. But if you see a face in death, and then the pallor of death spreads over that face and it begins to disintegrate so you see it's nothing at all you see it's ofarato nothing but mud is dirt and it's returning to the dirt and we have to battle against that we know we come from the dirt and yet we have to fight against that feeling and understand we are Salem the king with the image of Hashem that's what we are And therefore, as soon as a body dies, it's an obligation to bury it out of sight. Google, leave it out. It's something we never discussed yet.